coming out and supporting the revival. If you would, I'm going to ask you to stand. We open up with prayer. Father God, as we come before you tonight, we thank you for that night's meeting. We thank you for your Holy Spirit.
Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank the Lord tonight that He set me free. Don't have to be bound to the things of this world. Don't have to be bound to sin. Don't have to be bound to man. A man can be free through by the blood of Jesus. And I'm so thankful for it tonight. Amen. 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 Does someone have a prayer request tonight? We know the one that can calm the storms. Amen. We know the one that can speak peace. Amen. And winds and waves have to obey His will. Glory to God. So glad that I can depend upon God. So glad that He is God and He's more than enough. Glory to God. I wouldn't even know how to make it without Him. And I praise Him that He is my God. And my Savior. Amen. Does anybody have a special song upon their heart and mind?
know that's how I feel. Like it's not hard. Amen. It's not if you've served him one day, you've come too far to look back. Amen. Because he'll take you through. Glory to God. Amen. Anybody else got a song upon your heart tonight? Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. 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 Jesus, Jesus. Glad to be born of the Spirit of God and God to be in the family. Boy, I'm going home for you today. I can't wait for that. Everywhere I go, that I'm going home, my papa Papa call us home. Heaven's going to be a beautiful place. Boy, I ain't been there yet, but it's Boy, I get a little taste of it down here. I enjoy my Christian life. I know it's a battle. It's a battle every day. I don't know how the devil works out, y'all, but he works on me every day. Every day of my life, I got to put up with him. But I tell him he's a liar, get out of my way. That I'm going home one of these days. I'm glad for that. I give up this world. I'm still in it, but I give it up. I don't want no part with Satan no more. We want to turn him down. I can't enjoy sin no more. Boy, if I sin, I get in trouble with God. I've been in trouble with him. Sure I have since I've been a Christian. But boy, I enjoy my Christian life. Enjoy knowing that Jesus is real. He went to the cross. He died on the cross. He suffered for us. And what are we doing for him? I tell you. This sister was talking about y'all I had to play last night, but my daughter was supposed to tell me, well, it was up Mohegan. She told me it was up Mohegan, and I, I heard today it's going to be down here, and they called her today and asked her about where it's going to be, and I tell you, I'm glad to be here tonight. I enjoy my Christian life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I love to meet Christian people. A lot of Christian people I ain't seen in years. I was up present here not too long ago, and I seen a lot of old Christians up there I hadn't seen in years, and I didn't even know them. But boy, I believe we'll know when we get to heaven. I believe we'll know people there. I believe it's going to be a real place. And imagine going to a place where you'll never have another heartache. No more trouble. I had a lot of trouble in it. But I'm still going. Still looking. One day and a while. I'm going to leave this troublesome world. A lot of trouble here in Texas. Boy, it hurts to lose our loved ones. I have then lost two brothers and then lost three sisters. And it hurts to lose your loved ones. But boy, if they right with the Lord, we can meet them again. Won't that be wonderful when we get to heaven? No more heartache, no more trouble. Don't you want to go? All the way we can go is die out to sin. But I've been raised from the dead. I was in sin. I was in darkness. I was lost without God. But He raised me from the dead. I was blind in darkness. Couldn't see too good. But I know one thing if I didn't repent that I was going to hell. A lot of people don't like to hear you talk about hell, 
But if you don't repent of your sins, that's where you're going. You're going to be lost forever. Imagine going to that place and being lost forever. Boy, I tell you, we need to pray as we never prayed before. It's getting worse all the time. Boy, I tell you, we people are going to write against the Bible talking about man marrying man, woman marrying woman. Oh, it's right against the Word of God. And I tell you, we need to stand against it. And boys, it might come a time they'll put us in jail if we stand against it. But boys, we need to stand against it. Because it's against the Word of God. So pray for us, old boy. And it's fine. Say I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that play last night. You know, my mind today, I was up after one o'clock or something thinking about that show. I'm telling you, it's time to get ready. I hit it. Amen. Time to be ready. Amen. 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 Look around and see all these mountains in people's lives, heartaches and troubles and trials. The word says if we had faith as a grain of mustard seed, we could say to these mountains, Be thou removed. Amen. 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 That's just a little teeny tiny faith, ain't it? Amen. But there's power there. And I'm so glad today that we're serving God. That can take care of all of these problems and all these mountains in our lives. Amen. Amen.
sing this one for Joey tonight. It's so good to be back in church with him and Trish. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's a good little preacher, man. Amen. Amen. Grew up right, right around me up there today. I would have never thought that even as growing up as a child, he was such a good boy, good guy. And I'm just so proud of him tonight. Amen.
he does, he has to back off. But I just praise the Lord tonight. I'm so thankful that I've got 
got more than this to look forward to. Glory to God, what did Paul say? Amen. If this was all we had. Amen. If this was all we had to look forward to, we'd be a man most miserable. But I'll tell you tonight, I'm not a miserable person. I've got something to praise God.
So I will start with the verses from Matthew. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. And I'm going to jump over to chapter 2, verse 9. The glory of this house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I think about that, I get excited Amen. right there. Amen. Glory to God. But now let's jump over to the book of Exodus. And I'll begin at verse 22. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people, that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods, which shall go before us, as for this, Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. We woke not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let him break it off. So they gave it to me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame amongst their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from the gate, to gate throughout the camp and slay every man, his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. For Moses has said, Consecrate yourselves today of the Lord. Even, I'm sorry, y'all, my Bible was written so small, I should have brought my up. Even every man upon his son. And upon his brother, that he may bestow a blessing upon you this day. Yeah. Sister Pat, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you to pray a blessing over this word. Lord, the Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I will come to you tonight, God, and say, believe it. Lord, that you will bless this word, God. Lord, that you will bless the servant, God. Lord, allow him to bring out what thus saith the Lord this night, God. Lord, help us to receive God and enter in in one mind and one accord. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you the glory. Amen. 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 You know, I recently was doing a little bit of study, and I shared this up at Not Orsingham's church this, not long ago, but I'm going to share it with you all. This, this really was alarming and it made me concerned. Today in the United States, and this is rounded numbers, they're close. I mean, nobody knows the exact numbers. About 4,000 new churches open in the United States in a year. That's a, that's a good thing. But the bad part is about 7,000 close. Right. Come on. And each month in the United States alone, 1,500 pastors shut their doors on churches and never open them again. That's frightening. That's very frightening. But as I was reading this word, and I began to think about what Haggai was saying right here. See, his job, there's not much in the Bible. You know, he has two books or two chapters in this book. But I've done a little theological research and done some research on him. And you'll find that him and Zechariah worked a lot hand in hand. And what it was, the, the Babylonians had just released Israel. They had held him captive for years. And Haggai's job was to encourage them. His job was to encourage them to rebuild the temple and make it top power. And I believe that's what the Lord has sent me here tonight. It's to get people focused on the house of God and get people focused on God's children and make it number one in your life. I believe that's what we need. I believe we need a revival and I believe that's what Haggai was bringing. I believe he was coming to tell them if we'll put God first, He's going to bless us. If we'll put God first in everything that we do, we'll prosper. That's what we got to do. It is so important to come in God's house. It doesn't matter where you go as long as you go somewhere, but show your brothers and sisters 
support, pray Amen. for us, Amen. love them. Amen. And then, you know, it was talking about going up and gathering wood yes. and building the house. And as I was thinking of this, it made me just do this. I up my sleeve and I rolled up. It's time to go to work. Amen. It's time for the church to go to work. I look around and I see a country falling to pieces. I look around our communities. I see drugs. I see alcohol. I see divorce. I see people living in poverty. It's time to go to work. It's time to get out and walk hand in hand. Join together. Again, not mattering where you go to church, how you worship. That's right. Just standing under one faith, one Lord, one baptism, and His name is Jesus Christ. And if we'll come together in Him, we're going to see something good happen. We're going to see something that we've never seen before. We're going to see the healings of God. We're going to see things that people can only dream of. But it takes us coming together. It takes people who are willing to step out. Step out. And that's exactly why these two these verses and these stories go together. Because when you look at what was happening, Moses had came off the mountain. He had been praying for days. And he comes off of this mountain. These people that he left, they were praising God. They were happy. They were being delivered from the land of Egypt. And he comes back and they're all to pieces. It is a mess. And when you really get to studying, it was kind of like now. It was very similar. They had false gods. How many false gods do we see people with? Yeah. We see people make gods and idols out of their jobs. They make gods and idols out of their cars, out of their homes. Come on. They put God aside. That's right. Too many times do people take the grace of our God and use it for an excuse. Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. we got to put a stop to that. And I love what the Levites done. Because the Levites were considered a cursed people. I'm going to read you all some verses out of Genesis. And I can throw it down right here. Jacob, he, he, he didn't like to put it like. But if you look in Genesis 49, verses 5 through 7, it says, Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are their habitation. Oh, my soul. Not unto their secret, unto their assembly, my honor. Be not thou united, for their anger they slew a man, and their self will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. And I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. They were in bad shape. People really looked down on them. That's where the Christian folks stand at that. People are really looking down on us. People are looking down and they're trying to kick us to the side. I was sitting the other day and it made me furious. And I won't go into big details. But Trish said she was at work and it wasn't said directly to her. But she said it was said. No more Jesus talk. That hurt my heart. That hurts my heart because I want Jesus everywhere I go. And whether they like it or whether they don't, He's going with me. He's going to be there sitting beside of me. He's going to be living in here. And that's what we got to do. we got to do like those things I said because they took a situation that was pure chaos, that was all a mess, and they said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to step out. We're going to serve the Lord. We're on the Lord's side. And I'm going to tell you tonight that sometimes your best opportunities come in pure chaos. Yeah. Because that's the time when everybody's falling apart and God is saying, stand up. Yes. This is your turn. Amen. And I believe just like when Jesus walked into the tomb of Lazarus, at the voice of his, just at his word, when he said, Lazarus, come forth. He had to come forth. Amen. That dead man Amen. came alive. Something had to happen. And I believe that same voice is crying out tonight, saying, rise my people, stand up. Take a stand against the devil. And I'm telling you, if we'll do that, it's time we serve notice on the enemy. I came tonight, oh glory to God, to serve an eviction notice on the enemy. It's time to tell the devil, you've got to get out of my house. You've got to get out of my family. It's time to cast him out. That's what the Word of God 
come to you. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Use them, God. But you know the best part? He says, not much strength. By power, but by my spirit. That's right. If we just trust in God and believe His word, good things are coming. Amen. Good things is coming. Bless you, Lord. I believe, if, you know, Proverbs it says, "Commit thy works unto the Lord, and your thoughts shall be established." It's time we get our minds on God. It's time we stand up to this nation. I ain't afraid. You want to take me to jail? I'll walk out that door in handcuffs. I'll do it for my Lord. He died for me. At least I can do something a little bit for Him. It is time we stand up and look at these people, look them in the eyes, and we stand up as a nation. We stand up as a country and say, we want God. We'll do that. That's when we get that later church and it talks about the Levi. Levi, I'm sorry, I'm getting too excited. Now that hang out was talking about. That's where it'll happen. That's where that peace will come. We get this nation focused on God, and nothing can stop. That's right. Because it's God. I say I, I say this so much, but I, I just can't help it. If God can speak this word into existence with His mouth, what can stop me? Because His word's in control. Before there was a way or a why, there was God. Before there was a Bible, before there was a church, there was God. And He went out all by Himself, and He stepped out, and He said, "Let there be." There was. Yes. So why can't He speak this word in this Bible? And it is. Amen. Too many times that we give in to fear and doubt. That's right. I wasn't made of a spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. Right. And I believe that if we will stand at, step up and stand again, every wall that the devil was built will crumble. Amen. But it takes that fearlessness. Amen. Because the Bible don't tell you to negotiate with the devil. He don't tell you to listen to what he's got to say. My Bible says cast him out. And I say to you right now, devil, I cast you out. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me right now. And I say you've got to go, devil. I say you've got to leave. Because victory. It's coming. This whole deal's wrapping up. And we're going to have to have that fearless a mentality, that determined mentality, because it's going to get worse and worse. They're trying to take my Jesus from me. I'm going to hold on to him tighter. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to cling to the cross. That's what we have to do. I am so afraid for my children. I turned on, the, uh, I don't even remember what it was. It was something on the internet. And it broke my heart again. Now, I, I don't look at anybody any different. I love every human being on this earth because they have a soul. That's right. Amen. But they were taking children and forcing them in an elementary school to say the gay pledge and to clap when they were done. We as Christians cannot allow that. They have their right. And my Bible teaches me they have that right. They, their day will come. Their day of judgment will come. And I'm not going to be mean to them. I want them right here. I want them here at the Word of God. I want them to feel welcome. I'll wrap my arm around and say, I love you. And Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. That's what we need to do. We don't need to slap them around. But we don't need to let them slap us around either. We're called to be the head and not the tail. Paul said we're more than a conqueror. And we got to stand on that as a church. We got to stand on that as friends and brethren. It just it concerns me. I I, I can't stop. It, I turn on my TV. I hear it. I go to work and I hear it. Cast him out. Cast the devil out. I believe through that authority that Christ has given us, we can cast him out. I believe we can have a revival. Unlike any other, because the Word tells me that in the latter day He'll pour out His Spirit yeah. upon all flesh. Amen. I believe we can see signs and wonders right here tonight. Amen. But it's going to take somebody that's willing to fight through it. Somebody that's willing to say, I give it all up. And He said the Word consecrate. That's what it's going to take. If you want a ministry or to walk in extreme power, given by God before, it's none of our own. Amen. You've got to separate yourself from everything else. Yeah. And I think of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a great example of that. He walked in the wilderness. But if you look at how he was born, he had every right for his birthright and the way they honored things in that time. 
He could have lived a lavish life. He was a high priest's son. He could have done what he wanted to do, but he chose to be different. He chose to go in the wilderness and wear camel's hair and eat honey yes, yeah. and locusts because he knew that's what it takes. Amen. And he also knew that was where God was. Yes. God was in the wilderness because he was ashamed of what his people were doing. Moses is another example of the same thing. Yes, he is. Moses kills the two Egyptians. And the Bible teaches us that he flees. He ran. And he runs out into the other side of the desert. In the wilderness. But sometimes, when I think about that, God has to lead us out of the environment we're in. Mm -hmm. To fully reveal himself to us. Yeah. And sometimes we've got to get away from the world. Sometimes we've got to get away from the situation. And sometimes it may take you standing up and saying, you know what, if I can't talk about my Lord, you can have this job. Amen. You can have everything in yeah. Because if God ain't here, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Amen. 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 I want God everywhere I go. I want Him. I, I can't say that. I could say that over and over a thousand times, and I can't say it enough that I want Him in that coal mines with me. I want Him when I go to bed. I want Him when I'm riding down the road. I want Him everywhere we go. I want Him with you everywhere you go. But it's going to take that consecration. And it... There's so many people that just play church. Come on, baby. They ain't no more straddling the fence. We're too close to going home. That's We're too close to victory. Well, We're too Lord. close to that homecoming day. It's time to get focused Amen. on God That's right. and lay everything else aside. I'm guilty of this myself too many times. Do I sit and worry over jobs? Do I sit and worry over the weather? Who cares? God's in control. Uh -huh. It's His. <laughs> it is. His. But we said and we let the devil use those little bitty things and manipulate our minds and attack us and weaken us to where we're so weak it's such to a point and we can't function. We can't do God's intention for us because we're focused on the problem. If we're going to focus on the problem, let's focus on the lost. Let's focus on all these souls. All these children that are raised up in homes that are beaten, <coughs> drugs. That's right. Yes. There's no sense in it. That's right. And I believe if people pray again, their parents will come to church. That's right. Or somebody else that will take them to church will come again. It's time. It is time. And this is a very short message, but I know it's ordained of God. And I know he sent me to Thank tell each and every one of you here tonight. Thank you, Lord. Cast that devil out. Amen. Cast him out of your home. Amen. Cast him out of your, where you live. Yes. Tell him to get away from your family. Yes. Every curse was broken when Jesus endured that cross. That's right. Yes. The only curse we live under now is sin. Yes. And he offers us salvation for yes. us. Yes. So why do we say that we worry over this and that and this and that when if we can have that salvation? The Bible says I'm a joint heir to the Father of grace. Can't you say it right there, says that one day we're going to go to heaven and walk on the streets of gold? I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to see the face of Jesus Christ and tell Him I love you and I thank you. I want to kiss His feet. I want to worship Him in every way with every ounce of heart that I got because He reached down in a miry pit and pulled me out of it. And if he can do that for me, he can do it for anybody. And that's the good part about it. He don't have no respect or person. He'll say this one. He'll say that one. He'll heal this one. He'll heal that one. It takes the matter of faith that it takes. And the Bible tells me that I'll have that measure of faith if we just use it. Amen. All of us have the faith to see him. All of us have the ability to preach the gospel. Because the Holy Spirit living inside of you will bear witness. Amen. You just got to trust Him. You got to know that voice. You got to hear it in your ear and say, Lord, I'm yours. Amen. And I know there are people in here. I, the Lord was dealing with me on the way down the road that there are people right now that Satan's fighting you every way you turn. Every way you turn. But tonight's your breakthrough. Amen. Tonight's the night that you lift up your hands and say, Thank you, Lord. My freedom is in you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that my breakthrough is here. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Thank you, Lord. I know because what He showed me, it deals in my own home. 
You ain't dying, Trix. The devil's been lying to you. Praise God. I said and I prayed and the Lord began to speak to me and He told me to cast that devil out of my house. Yes. He told me to tell him, devil, you're a liar. You're nothing but a liar and a prince of. And I serve the King of Kings. I serve the Lord of Lords. The Prince of Peace. The author and finisher of my faith. And His name is Jesus. Even nature is subject to Him. He's, the disciples said, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the rains obey His command. He's Jesus. That's all you got to say. When you speak the name of Jesus, the devil has to go. Praise the devil. This is the devil and he'll flee from you. The same thing. You the devil. Stand on the name of Jesus. Put your feet firmly on the rock. And watch what's happening. The breakthrough. I know there's someone else in here tonight that the devil's causing problems in your family or sickness. I don't know who it is, but I know the Lord dealt with my heart. But what he's trying to do is weaken the whole family. Because what he's saying is he didn't heal Why didn't God heal you? You go to church. You pray. Why didn't God heal you? But God said for me to remind whoever this is, He's still God. Amen. He's still in control. He's never let go and He's never left His side. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm so glad for that. And I don't know who that word's for, but praise God for it. Yes. Praise God that somebody that can know He is walking yes. side by side with you. Glory. Glory. Glory to God. You know, a couple weeks ago, they were having a wonderful revival over at Twin Branch. And the Lord led me to preach that very message. When the storm came, the disciples were on the boat. They said, Master, Master, we perish. But Jesus never cut off the boat. Yes. He never left. And when they cried out to him, what happened? He rose up and he spoke to the storm and it had to go. Yes. Speak Jesus over the storms in your life. Speak it and watch what happened. Watch that devil flee. Watch him run. We got to get back. The old church. But in that process, we've got to start a new. Amen. We gotta go after the young, the old, and there are some things you gotta look past. Somebody yeah. might like a little style different of music. As long as it's singing about Jesus, I can live with it. Yeah. It may not be what I want to hear, but praise God, they're singing about Jesus. That's right. Somebody might wear a little different clothing than what we're used to. But if you're in the house of God, God bless them. Yes. Right. Amen. we got to come together. That's right. Amen. If we don't come together, more and more are falling by the wayside. That's right. That's right. And that's what every Christian's mission should be. Is to tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. Amen. But if you're in here tonight, I'm going to open this up. Because again, this was a short message and I know it was short. But to put it all in a box and how it all went together. Let's begin to rebuild the church. Amen. And step out on faith. Know that God's on our side. Amen. That's all we need. It's peace. I feel a peace right now. I praise God for it. I feel such a peace in my spirit right now. And I know somebody else feels it because it ain't me. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Ghost. So if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus, Here's your chance. Here's your chance to be that leader in your family. To step out and maybe it will begin a revival in your own family. Maybe this is the night that you overcome something you fought for years. Whether it be a, a, whatever. A drug, <coughs> an addiction. Or things you do in quiet that nobody even knows that you do. Your opportunity to overcome is right here this night. Yes, amen. It don't take me touching you, me saying nothing. It's between you and the Lord. That's all we need is Jesus. And when you leave here tonight, let that just run through your mind. Let's roll up our sleeves. Let's rebuild the church. Let, I want to come back this time next year and see these pews full. I want to see people standing outside trying to get in. But if that's what it takes, I'll open every window and listen. 
I'll do something to help. But let's stand together, help one another, bear one another's burden. Pray for one another. Pray. And when you go by a house that you know a drug dealer lives in, pray for them. Don't talk bad about them. Don't go down the road and, and go rock steady and say, I want to see them safe. Amen. And when you go down the road and you see somebody doing something that, and they're broke down, instead of talking bad again, say, can I help you? Yes. Jesus loves you. Let me help you. You can't win hearts and minds with anger. And hatred. It's got to be with this. It's got to be with love. And I know who created love. He's the best at it. So if I'm showing that, that means he's, he's shining through. So again, if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus, don't wait. Don't wait. And let your family. Not only you, but your family. The devil don't want you. He's already got you. He wants your kids. He wants your grandkids. And he will say, I, I have, I've told this story before, but I've seen him destroy one, and then it will go throughout the whole family. Don't let that happen to your family. If you don't know him here tonight, just, just say, I love you. All it takes. There's no fancy word. It's an undying yes. It's that whatever you want me to do, Lord, yes, I'll do it. Yes, amen. Lord, save me. That's all it takes. Sister Sherry, what is the little time? Because I'm going to open up the altar now for anybody that needs a little bit of prayer. This altar is open for that also. Because I do know, and I, again, I know there are people here that are fighting. And I can't tell you that your storm will end in this sick. But I believe there's a breakthrough. Because again, when you raise up your hands and you begin to speak to Jesus, the devil's got to get up. We serve a good God.
rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain, moderately. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Take the time to thank God for what he does. Take the time to pray for the others around you that are hurt. There are so many people that are not. Will lay their head down on the pillow and cry themselves. There are people in here that do that. There are people here that are hurt deeper than we'll ever know. Those things take time. The Bible says a merry heart is good like a man. But a broken spirit drives the bone. We're broken people here tonight. But God wants to fix it. It's that little, little sound. just like you were knocking on that, knocking on your heart. Telling you, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I didn't even plan, you know, that. I got these notes right here. And I had what I thought was a message, but God's taking me another way right now. We have to come together and meet the need of one another. That's what the old church was known for. It was that friend that just came by your house and said, Hey, how you doing? I heard a preacher say once that the greatest gift you can give somebody is you. Is your time. Take the time. Slow down. Life moves so fast. I, I work a production-based job. It's always hurry, 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 hurry. And then when you're hurrying, they say, can't you hurry a little faster? I only got so much hurry. I'm a fat boy in a low place. I can only go so fast. <laughs> And sometimes I feel that way when I get home. I feel like I can't slow down. But God's telling all of us, slow down. Take the time. I love all of you.